Hey guys, Dusty, Aaron, and little Mr. Maxi, and welcome back to the channel. We've got a video today that we've been wanting to make for a super long time. Yes, so you may have seen that we just got back from a recent trip to New York City, yes. and we made it through the Big <laughs> Apple with a little baby. Yes. <laughs> so we thought we'd share with you guys our top five tips for travel with a toddler or baby. So we wanted to give a quick shout out to ByeByeBaby.com and yes. thank them for teaming up with us and sponsoring this video. So all of the gear that you'll see in this video, we have purchased either online or in store at Bye Bye Baby. So travel tip number one, let's just get in to my favorite thing, the gear. <laughs> He's a so total gear guy. I have always been all about the gear. So one of the probably most important things that we've come to realize we need that's actually right here behind us is our pack and play or play yard. So we will link the one that we really recommend in the description below, but this is something that you are going to need. Even if you're in a hotel room, you're gonna need a place for your little one to be contained and kind of confined and a place that you can throw their toys in and just let them go. Right, and not just any pack and play, but something that's lightweight and compact, which right. this one folds up almost into one of those little travel, like chairs you would see moms and dads <laughs> sitting in at sporting events in the summertime. Right. It's, it's effortless, honestly. Yes. <laughs> Who tooted? What are you two just farted? <laughs> oh, that, was that was a dad fart. No. <laughs> not you. Did you Sorry guys, we had to pop Mr. Max in his pack and play. He was due for a nap. <laughs> it is definitely nap time. You might see some balls or some hands right here, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna be quieting down real soon. <laughs> so anyway, this that brings us to our top gear item number two, and that is a packable lightweight stroller. So we actually found one, again, on Bye Bye Baby that was super affordable and really compact that we took to New York City. And we gotta be honest, we didn't love it. So we got home after knowing what we didn't love about the stroller that we tried to get through New York City with, right. and we survived, but we ended up going a different route and finding another one that we absolutely love. I would say the most important thing about the stroller is having cup holders, compartments, not only up top for mom and dad to put like your tea and drink, but mm -hmm. underneath too. So like if you have a jacket or a mm -hmm. shopping bag or food, something that you need to put underneath, that is key. So again, we're gonna link our favorite strollers in the description below. So immediately upon returning home, I knew the first thing I had to do was get a new lightweight travel stroller. So I hopped on to Bye Bye Baby. I absolutely love that they have anything and everything you could ever need. In fact, I wish that when we did our baby registry that we would have registered on Bye Bye Baby because if you get everything, all your gifts, and then you wanna go back and you wanna complete your registry, then you get 15% off of your entire order. That would have been huge for us. That being said, I've got a stroller in the cart that I really, really love, and the thing that has helped me the most is that not only do they have the best assortment, they have something for every budget, and on top of that, reviews. It's really helpful to hear from other users, other moms, other parents, that what worked for them, what didn't work for them. So I know with our travel stroller, the most important thing that we would have liked to had is like a tray for two drinks. The trays that we had in ours was like all flimsy and it fell apart. And then also a tray for Max to have his little sippy cup and maybe a snack. So I'm gonna find something with that. And then I also saw this awesome stroller when we were on the streets in New York. This mom had a stroller and her little toddler was standing behind. There was like a platform on the stroller and he was standing up. But I found a stroller that has an attachment for a tray um, that they can stand on, like a little platform. So can't wait to get it in the mail. Super pumped to try it out. So the other thing that we're on the hunt for is a convertible car seat. So they've got tons, like I said, great reviews and I think I found the one that I wanna get, so I'm super excited for that too. I never in a million years thought that I would be like so excited about baby gear, but this stuff is awesome because if it works well, it is a game changer. It will change your life. <laughs> Moving on in the gear category, our third favorite piece of gear that you must have for travel is a structured baby carrier. So yes. we love our Ergo Baby. We've used a couple different types. Sometimes the fabric and cloth ones are nice for airports, especially if you have a tiny newborn, but yep. now that Max is 
on the cusp of that like baby versus toddler stage. Yeah. We really love the Ergo baby because it's a little bit more structured and allows him to actually face outward and right. see the world, which he actually prefers. Oh, totally. <laughs> this is something, again, that we took to Costa Rica last year. We're going to be taking it again this year. Perfect for walking, hiking. So our fourth gear item is... <laughs> Pretty much a mom thing. You better talk about it. I better take the reins because <laughs> it's a pump. Yes. So two different pumps. If you guys haven't watched my breastfeeding video, you should click and check that one out. Yep. But I will say it's nice to have a manual handheld pump. Yep. And it's also important that you have your electric pump with you because you never know. Your baby could get thrown off from flying and jet lag and maybe they're not nursing on schedule and you're going to need that pump to keep your supply up yep. and also to bring bottles with you on the go. Totally. Number five, also kind of a mom one, yep. but he loves his bags, but I love <laughs> bags now too because I've got a plethora of baby bags. But yes. honestly, what I like the best is just a backpack with tons of compartments, and yep. I mean tons. Yep. Any little compartment and zipper pouch you can hold different things in, whether you're using a pacifier or wipes or diapers or another change of clothes. Make sure that you not just have a change of clothes for your baby in case of blowouts or burp ups. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you also want one for yourself because trust me, we've both gotten it before. <laughs> yes. Cool. Gear done. done. <laughs> Moving on to travel tip. Number two. Numero dos. Planes, trains, and automobiles, and how to navigate each. I would say the most important thing, especially if you're on a plane or a train, is to have an aisle seat. So whether you have to use the restroom, change the diaper, or just get up and bounce around a little bit, you're gonna wanna have an aisle seat because getting over someone with an infant is not safe or easy. So something that's always on the forefront of my mind with travel is germs. Whether it be on the airplane, in the airport, or even at your final destination. Right. Big cities especially feel extra dirty compared to where we live. <laughs> yes. so so I would say two things, either get over it, which we have really done as yeah. of late. We're not germaphobes as much as we used to be. Nope. I used to carry around a big old thing of hand sanitizer in my back <laughs> pocket, in my car, everywhere. Yeah. But we don't use it anymore because the alcohol can actually harm you. It kills both the bad and the good bacteria that's actually helping your immunity. So either get over them or use some kind of essential oil blend. I love to bring a little travel like spray bottle with a blend in it yep. or a roller bottle. You can also bring like a lavender one and rub it on. That can be great for yourself and for kiddos yep. to keep them in their sleep routine. Totally. Now car seats. So we have traveled with a car seat before, which isn't easy because they're so big and bulky, but they do check for free on airplanes. But something that we've done actually yes. the last couple trips. That's actually a good point too. Just so you ahead. guys know, baby things check for free. Oh yeah, all of <laughs> these things do check for free if they're baby items. So that being said, on the, our last trip to California, we actually chose a rental car that came with a car seat. So again, in regards to germs, that may be something that you're not super excited about, but we've just decided that we're super healthy, we're gonna get over the germs, and it was nice. We didn't have to pack a car seat, the car came with one. Yes. And in, recently in New York City, you can't carry car seats around and install them in cabs. You just have to hold your baby. So again, it was a little nerve wracking at first on yeah. trains and in cabs, but yep. usually traffic is at a standstill anyways. And to be <laughs> honest, we walked everywhere and right. use our stroller so it wasn't that big of a concern no but the... just heads up things to know especially if you're going to a big city like new york tip number three for traveling <laughs> with your baby and or toddler is all about feeding and breastfeeding yeah so this kind of blends from planes trains and automobiles into feeding and breastfeeding because my biggest tip for flying is to nurse during takeoff and landing. Yep. This can really help your baby's ears to adjust and adapt to the changes in cabin pressure to right. make sure that they aren't having any discomfort, headaches, earaches, anything yucky like that. Yep. But we're so lucky that Max is a thumb sucker because he <laughs> self adjusts all the time. Yes. On the note of feeding and breastfeeding, what do you feel like New York was? Was it a little bit of a struggle? Yeah, New York was a little hectic because there you can't just sit down or pop down or like do what you want whenever you want right you like have to find a place so I think again this is more rare and specialty but I think the best thing for us in regards to finding a place to change a diaper or feed max were was dressing rooms 
Yeah, so we love to shop. Even if you don't love to shop, when you go somewhere like that, most travel destinations have a lot of shopping. Yep. We recommend just go in, mosey around, wander around, maybe try something on, or just be honest with them yep. and say, hey, I was just wondering if I could use your dressing room really quick to feed my baby. And yep. most places were super, super accommodating to us. We found the most nice, luxurious fitting rooms we could find. And you probably don't have to tell them this part, but we even changed some diapers in there. Right. <laughs> it Again, was super convenient. We, yeah, we're just honest with people. And they're like, sorry, we don't have a bathroom. And then we're like, oh, it's for the baby. And then they're like, okay, yeah, come this way. So <laughs> just remember, if you're traveling with the baby and if you're nice, people will hook you up. Right. So as far as breastfeeding goes, find a nice fitting room or a super nice bathroom if you can. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I also recommend I always travel with like at least one or two big chunky scarves yep. so I can just throw it over me and we could be sitting down at dinner and most people wouldn't think anything of it. Right. So you just got to get creative with it and not get too nervous. It's totally a breeze. As far as solids go, like going out to restaurants, a lot of times the food is just like either too spicy or too salty, maybe yep. too sugary if you're getting something dessert wise. Yep. Um, maybe just too rich, I don't know, not really baby friendly. There are a few things we usually ask the waiter for that they are perfectly able to accommodate. Yep, always ask for avocado. So Max loves avocado, it's super easy. Almost every restaurant is gonna have it. And again, it's just one ingredient, whole food, right? Mm -hmm. So we always ask for avocado. And another thing I guess we would, would say is to just get some groceries. Like we always mm -hmm. like to buy clean drinking water and a few gro groceries whenever we get anywhere on vacation. That's the time to buy some fruit, maybe mm -hmm. some healthy grains or something that you can mix in with some avocado to kind of have in a little packable um, case to take to the restaurants with you to be able to feed your infant. So Yeah, so even on the airplane, we did bring a couple things from home. I made some of my muffins that I have on the blog post. They're just like a oat banana pumpkin muffin and yep. I love them, Dusty loves them, and Max loves good. them. We usually bring some kind of bar. You can find chewy gooey bars that babies can sometimes nibble on. Yep. It's better for a toddler I suppose. Yep. Um, but just berries and bananas too. Bananas totally. are always a breeze and avocados like Dusty already said. So right. A couple other restaurant things that are really great that are usually pretty common would be like steamed rice or like some white rice, yep. um, steamed vegetables, like really soft carrots usually you can find, or like we had a couple of good, really, really good lentil soups Yeah. and that was easy for us to spoon feed Max, high right. in that iron and protein. And right. Potatoes and sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. We stopped at this place in the East Village in New York and got the best like what was it corn chowder soup and it had sweet potatoes i actually think max ate more of it than i <laughs> yeah. did i was like bombed out because he <laughs> ate all my soup but so again just to recap breastfeed wherever you can that's nice and comfortable and yep. as far as food goes for snacks our favorites are like homemade muffins or little bars yep. bananas and berries Great for the airplane, great for your backpack. Yep. And for restaurants, go for avocado, rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, yep. some kind of lentil stew, and steamed veggies. So travel tip number four is gonna be staying on routine and having some consistency. So again, the first thing that comes to my mind is having a good pack and play for your toddler or infant. Again, you might be in a whole different city or a whole different country, but to them, they're at home, right? They, they have their pack and play, maybe a couple toys that they know and love. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of times in hotel rooms, they're not baby-proofed like your home might be with plug-ins right. plugged and all that. So yep. keeping them more contained in a pack and play is really, really helpful. Totally. And also I would say keeping nap times and bed times consistent right. and meal times. Right. Anything that you can keep consistent is really helpful. Yeah. So it's not a, it's a lot easier said than done. There's a lot going on. It's yep. a lot of stimulation when you're in a new environment, but right. we've found that like especially with our travel stroller, like Max always falls asleep when we go for a stroller ride. Yeah. So it was really easy for him to stay on his nap times when we were walking out and wandering around. Yep. And bedtimes, mm, I would give us maybe like 
a C plus on staying on track. We did not do that good. We stayed up way too late and Max does not like to sleep if we're not sleeping at night. Mm -hmm. But again, do your best. As close as you can stay to your regular routine and stay consistent, the better. The better for you and the better for your baby. So Yeah, it's especially important for kids because they like to know what to expect. Even though they might give you a little bit of resistance, right. it actually is more helpful for their development if you can stick to that routine. Totally. Our fifth and final Final travel tip for your toddler or your baby is finding downtime, playtime, and kid-friendly environments. Right, so one of the coolest things that we did, fortunately we had really nice weather in New York City, was we went to Central Park and we had lunch there. We just sat Max right there in his stroller. We were able to sit on the bench and feed him. Then we got out and walked around and played a little bit. And that was so key for us to not only get to play with him, but he got to stretch his legs out a little bit and have some fun too. Yeah, that's one of the things that was like really painful for me to see. I was just yeah. like, I feel so bad for him in this stroller the whole trip, but right. we were able to get him out. We went to Washington Square Park, which is like one of our favorite spots in NYC. Yeah. But it was just fun to get him out. There was a man with like this big bubble machine and all the little kids were playing in it. Um, there's playgrounds at parks usually if you're into that too. Totally. Other options would be like a children's museum. Again, there's going to be attractions that are family friendly almost in any big touristy city. Right. So like a children's museum, like I said, or where else did we go that was fun? Well, we went to the Guggenheim Museum. So again, maybe not something that's super kid friendly, but it's a little bit more peaceful, a little bit more calm. You can again, use the restroom and get the baby out, let him walk around a little mm -hmm. bit, stretch his legs. And yeah, places like that are just a nice break from the chaos of like the mm -hmm. streets and the shopping and the restaurants and stuff like that. So highly recommend nice quiet museums yeah that was the perfect place for him to have a nap time too because right. it's a little more chill and dimmed down i can't wait to go to an amusement park and like ride some rides like <laughs> right. when is this little man going to be tall enough to ride the fun rides Not <laughs> that's what while. i can't wait for <laughs> so we hope you guys enjoyed these top five travel tips and some of the clips that we shared from our travels right if you guys want to see more travel videos if you're into these family friendly ones Give this video a thumbs up. It really, really helps our channel out and we appreciate it so much. Yes. We'd love for you to join the Eat, Move, Rest fam. Hit yep. that subscribe button and click that bell to turn on your notifications. Follow us on all forms of social media at DB Stanzik, at Aaron Stanzik. Leave what us else? some love in the comments. Yes. And Max might have just woken up. He is like so. kicking and screaming again. <laughs> so we're going to have to get back to it. And also, be sure to share this with anybody you know who it might help. Totally. We would appreciate it so much, and we know they will too. Right. Eat, move, rest your best. Peace. Bye, guys. And thanks again to Bye Bye Baby for sponsoring this video. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.